Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host for Economic Outlook. Welcome to our show. We hope you make plans each week to join us as we discuss the region's most important economic development initiatives. Retail is at a crossroads and the future of office space is unclear. Supply chain issues persist and inflation is near a 40 year high. But there's some bright spots in the commercial real estate forecast as the hot streak for industrial properties remains and multifamily properties continue to perform well. We'll take a closer look at what's happening in the commercial real estate markets coming up on Economic Outlook. Most analysts predict that 2023 could be a challenging year in the commercial real estate markets, impacted by things like the war in Ukraine, market volatility, high inflation, and interest rate hikes. At the same time, a number of critical projects are advancing in our region. We're taking a closer look at what's happening in the commercial real estate space, and I'm joined for that conversation by two experts, Tim Mehal, the Vice President of Retail Services and Principal at NAI Cressy, and Jeremy McClements, Senior Vice President at The Bradley Company. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for Happy coming back. Here. We've had you a couple times before, and it's always been a pretty popular discussion to talk about what's happening in commercial real estate. I think people are, uh, it's the bigger buildings in town, it's the high profile stuff people want to know a little bit about. So thanks for coming and being part of this conversation today. Uh, Tim, let's come your way first. Just, just more of an introduction. If people don't know NAI Cressy, tell us about what it, that is. NAI Cressy is, um, we're actually coming up on our 75th year uh, anniversary uh, in the community. Um, we started out as Cressy and Everett years ago and, and, uh, uh, and made the shift to a rebranding and, and a realignment with NAI, I don't know, five or six years ago. And, and Jeremy, if people don't know the Bradley name, what's the, tell us about the Bradley Company. So Bradley Company is, again, a commercial real estate firm locally, um, been around since 1978 and based out of South Bend. I'm based out of the South Bend office. Our corporate office is now based out of Indianapolis, but have offices all over the region and kind of service the entire commercial real estate market kind of beginning to end, anything that people need. Great, so you guys are in the middle of what's going on. Let's, let's just, let's have a high level conversation before it. As experts are talking about 2023, kind of some uncertainty out there. We're not sure what's, with it, like I mentioned, inflation rates and, and uh, um, so what, what's, the, what's the general state of uh, commercial real estate? Tim, I'll, I'll come your way first. Uh, how, are th how are things going in the commercial space right now? Uh, well, I can speak to the retail space yep. at this point. Uh, and it's, it's, I, I think 2023 will be similar to 2022. Um, we haven't seen a lot of large scale development at all in the community. Uh, there's been some smaller, smaller multi-tenant, two or three tenant uh, kinds of activity. There's been some larger tenant backfill of space, but there hasn't been a lot of that either. Uh, I think we've been, over the years, we've been blessed as a community where, where when things really boom, we haven't exploded and there hasn't been, you know, a ton of space getting thrown on the market at one time, which, you know, the down, or, or I guess the good part of that is that when the market does go to sleep for a while, we don't have a ton of space laying around waiting to get occupied. So there's, there's some demand right now, there's, but there's a little bit of a, um, we're having a hard time matching up available space with the users. Uh, but, um, uh, but by and large, it's, it's not gonna be um, huge scale development going on. Right, Jeremy, same question. So talk a little bit about the kind of the state of commercial real estate now. Sure, I mean, I, th I think I spent a lot of time in the industrial space and obviously that's been pretty strong all throughout the pandemic and continues to be that way with really low vacancy rates. So there's not a lot of space available. There is a little bit of development going on on that piece for sure. Um, you know, there's a 296,000 square foot building on the Northwest side that's available as a speculative building. And that's the fifth building by Great Lakes Capital that's going up out there. And so there's a, there's a little bit of that, but right now there's a lot more people looking than actually willing to actually move forward on a deal. I think there's a lot of uncertainty. You know, decisions last year that were telling people were telling us that we're gonna get made in the first quarter of this year have gotten pushed to the third quarter while they try to kind of figure out what's going on. Um, and so there's definitely a little bit of slowdown in terms of activity. There typically is in the winter time anyway. There's a little bit of a slowdown in activity, but part of that is just because of like what Tim said, there's not a ton of available space out there for people to do, to go into. So there's definitely that. I think on the office market, you know, there's, there's kind of two different areas locally here. There's the downtown sort of office market and then the Mishawak office market, which has done really well. I think there's, there's a little bit of a flight to quality in space and people trying to find smaller spaces for their offices, people trying to get people back to the offices and what that looks like. So all that's kind of going into this, this time of the year and causing us to have a little bit slower 
pace of deals getting done, but definitely a lot of activity in the market. Great. Tim, I'm going to come back your way and talk retail for a second. So, so I, I think of um, maybe retail in two buckets sometimes, maybe the suburban retail and kind of the downtown. There's been a lot of interest in, especially in all the downtowns here recently, to do more um, commercial re retail type development. It, 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 is, is one doing better than the other? Is that, a, is that a good strategy for folks to be thinking about new retail spaces in their downtowns? Well, it's, it's, it, new retail space in downtown, like ground floor of multi-family buildings or, or, or office buildings with ground floor retail, um, it's, it's there to, to fill what hopefully is a need. Uh, the, you know, the more people move downtown, the more they're going to require services of some type or another. Uh, you know, what we've seen for the most part the last several years when that's happened is it's been restaurants that have come in to service that. That's, that always seems to be the first thing that, that, that I think that local government wants when they're generating, trying to generate traffic in their downtowns. So it can work, um, and, and I think it has worked in, in South Bend. It's working, I think, in downtown Mishawaka as well with, the, you know, the, what's happened at the mill and with um, South Bend Chocolate opening up a, a public house uh, at the skating facility. Um, but but I think there's I think the expectations of the kinds of tenants and 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 the sales volume that people are going to do that's got to be tempered a little bit because we're still not you know there's still only so many people that are going to be in those um, you know that, that are going to be around those kinds of projects. Yeah. Chairman, to come back your way, you touched on office for a second. So obviously, pandemic was one of those where everybody left the office and worked from home. I, th I think I see you think many communities still wrestling with how many. Um, came back to work, not as many people are in the offices before. Uh, talk a little bit about just pandemic impacts on things like the office market. So obviously the pandemic had a huge impact on the office market. It, f it, you know, it felt like everybody left and they did. Everybody was at home and you know, trying to get people to come back to the office. It's not just about being in the office as much as it's about the culture and what you're trying to build as a company with the employees. And so I think that's the big rub right now is people trying to understand what does that look like to do a hybrid model or to have people come back into the office to focus on that a little more because people didn't just change how they live their lives during that time in terms of taking care of their kids and doing school at home and doing things like that. They also, they also changed the way that they were prioritizing their time and, and trying to be effective at what they were doing. And so I think that's the biggest struggle right now. It's not that people don't want to be in an office at all. It's that they want to be in a smaller footprint than they were in before. And so you know, that they can have, like downtown South Bend could have 30% vacant space right now, as opposed to Mishawaka that might be 10 or less single digits in terms of what's available, um, just because they're caring more about certain amenities like free parking and available parking and restaurants and things to go to when they're in the office. So it's kind of changed the whole idea of what office space looks like and needs to look like. And companies have figured out how they can be profitable and how they can be successful by having a smaller footprint. And now we're just trying to figure out how to put those people in those spaces in the right way. Yep. So uh, Tim, I'm gonna come back your way. So uh, we talked pandemic impacts a little bit. I think a little bit of retail, I think for years people have been r ready to proclaim retail um, dead, dying, um, suggested everybody's buying everything on e-commerce, e right? They don't even need to go out to the store anymore. But I, I think similar to the office, there's a little bit of this some people still like the shopping experience a little bit. Just talk about sort of maybe e-commerce, retail, how those two things are, are fitting together. Yeah, well, it, the point's a good one about, about how people, you know, people still want to interact. They need to interact. Um, I think there is a cultural thing about shopping and, and touching and feeling and seeing the merchandise that you're looking at. Um, there's not a lot of, there's no question that e-commerce is, is obviously exploded. Uh, but but people are still are still getting out, um, getting on the street and, and getting into stores. Uh, smaller footprints in retail, just as in office, um, and and there's there's still things that you you have to go out for. You can't you know you, you're not going to get your hair cut online. You're you know <laughs> there's there's certain things that you've you've just got to get out and and, and do. Um, so I think that's where a lot of the concentration is going to be over the course of the next couple of years. But, but I, think, I think retailers are also seeing that, that they don't, that everything isn't going to be bought online. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff obviously is, but not, it's, it's, not going to, it's not going to go away, yeah. the bricks and mortar. Jeremy, to come your way on the industrial side, so we, as we talk about e-commerce, I think what we've seen is the explosion of 
warehouse space mm -hmm. as, as people need to meet the just-in-time delivery stuff. So th j just talk about I its impact on industrial and kind of what's happening, how it's influenced what's going on there. I mean, the biggest thing it's done is it's changed the type of buildings and quality of buildings that are getting put in the market. So if you look at the northwest side of South Bend or you look into other Elkhart County, you're, you're seeing different buildings going up today than were going up before. So they're taller, they have more docks. Um, they're, they're more geared towards warehouse distribution as opposed to manufacturing, although there's a ton of manufacturing here still. Um, and, and then they're getting bigger. So you're seeing bigger buildings come in because you know, the pandemic did cause and it still causes and continues to cause issues with supply chain. And um, when manufacturers and warehouse distributors are trying to figure out what kind of inventory levels they have and they, they don't know when they're gonna get product, that impacts things and it impacts things on the retail side when they go to sell them. So I think footprints are changing. Some, some are getting bigger, some are getting smaller, but the, it's again, similar to what we talked about before, it's kind of a flight to quality. So trying to find good buildings that meet the needs, that are tall, that are big, that, that meet the needs of your business, but also meet the needs long-term for an owner or a developer that's putting those together. So that's kind of changed a little bit what we're seeing. Um, interest rates haven't helped, so you know if you have six and a half, seven percent interest on a general note and then even higher on a construction note. It, it makes it a lot harder to put these deals together today to build these buildings on speculation um, or even to build them for a specific tenant. So it does cause interest rates, interest rates are causing our rates to go up on buildings um, and construction costs obviously have an impact on that too. Great. Guys, we're going to take a quick break here in the studio. I'm going out in the field. George Lefanyotis, my co-host, is out to dive a little deeper into a, a project here in the area. George, let me toss it to you. Thanks, Jeff. I'm on the west side of South Bend over near the 31 bypass. I'm joined today by young Isaac Hall with Great Lakes Capital. Isaac, thanks for being around. Hey, thanks for having us. Hey, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the projects you guys have going on here. A lot of our viewers and residents across Michiana have noticed that this industrial park, I'll call it, over near uh, the west side of South Bend near the Cleveland Road exit has really uh, multiplied and grown and, and that's a big part of what you're doing out here now. But beyond that, I did want to talk a little bit about you and what uh, what brought you to this point. You're an analyst yes. with the Great Lakes Capital. What does an analyst do? I do a lot of analysis. No, <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I look into a lot of uh, market data, uh, look at where demand is, you know, for commercial real estate. Um, I do a lot of lease analysis, looking at what a uh, tenant is going to do in a space that, that we're going to provide to them, um, and, and a lot of numbers, Got a lot it. of numbers. Got it. So when we are looking at the numbers and you're thinking about a project, what are the actual metrics that you look at to help you decide whether you should invest a lot of money building a project? So uh, our key metric that we use is a return on cost. So it's the annual money that we get coming back in before debt service. Uh, as compared to the overall cost of the project. So as you looked at these new projects here, were these projects that you had tenants lined up before you developed or built the property? So these were all speculative developments. So we started construction um, before we had a tenant and we, as we're building the project, we're going through the leasing process. We're using brokers in the area who are, are looking for, for tenants that actively need space. In some of these larger warehouse type buildings that we've done in the past and done and focused on them on our show, we have noticed that there's a premium or a value to an already existing building for a business that's looking for space because they don't have to go through that time process of waiting for construction. Absolutely. You know, usually the, the build a suit process for an industrial building can take anywhere from 18 to 24 months. Uh, with a speculative build, you know, you, you bring a tenant in through the, the construction process, and they're able to um, occupy the space in as little as eight, eight months. Okay, now what geographically about this area, or maybe even beyond that, what makes this so attractive to these tenants uh, and businesses wanting to be located right here on the west side of South Bend? So we're, we're very centrally located in South Bend. Uh, we have good access to the toll road 8090 going east to west across the country, um, and as well as north-south roads that are, are very important uh, for distribution. So a lot of our tenants are distribution centers. So goods come in from other DCs in the region nationally, and then they go out to other, other locations 
in the region. And I know we talk about, and our viewers are probably seeing some of our graphics of the construction site next door, but this is one of your buildings. Yep. It, it houses what looks to be electrical uh, infrastructure yep. and supply parts. Yep. Uh, and that's really fits that model that you just described. Yes. So, all right, now let's focus a little bit on you. So you grew up in LaVille? Yes, I, I grew up in Lakeville, Indiana. I yep. uh, was a LaVille Lancer. <laughs> and uh, after high school went to IU South Bend. So what made you decide to stay here in this region to pursue your professional career? Yeah, it's mostly personal. I have a lot of family in the area. Um, and, but on top of that, you know, cost of living in Northern Indiana is much cheaper than, than any place else that I've looked into. So. Yeah. And that's one of the things that we focus on a lot in the show is, you know, retention of talent and what makes uh, younger members of our workforce want to stay in this area. Um, and I'm sure that the opportunity to work for an organization like Great Lakes Capital didn't hurt either. No, it did not. Um, very, very grateful for the opportunity to, to work with such a, uh, a dynamic group. Great. Now, you guys are focused on industrial and multifamily uh, developments. That yep. seems to be the, the primary focus of your, of your developments. Yes. Um, w how far does your geographic region span? So Great Lakes Capital as a whole, um, we have projects as far south as North Carolina, and we are just now starting some, some projects out west in Utah and Nevada. So we're here, there, and everywhere in between. Arguably a national company. Yes. Based right here in South Bend. That's right. That's awesome. So what's next after, uh, after the, the, the building across the street is built, which are, again, our viewers are seeing, you and I have been out there. Um, what, do we have a tenant for that facility that you can announce? We, we do not yet. Uh, we are talking to a couple different tenants, uh, but hope to have at least before construction's complete here in June. Cool. And then is there plans to further develop? I noticed there's some other buildings, maybe not Great Lakes Capital buildings, but there are some other projects in this area. Yeah, we, we do have an option uh, on the remainder of the land from here to the state line. Um, so we are looking at doing two more projects uh, up there. That's great. Um, well, as we wrap this up and uh, talk a little bit about the commercial real estate market, I know some of our viewers are thinking that may be slowing down or are you guys seeing signs of that in your industry? You know, I think there is a little bit of slowdown just given interest rates. It, it's the, the cost of debt. Uh, has doubled in, in the last three years. Um, so there is a slowdown, but I think there is still a lot of demand for, for both industrial and multifamily in our area, for sure. Well, thanks for being with okay, us. Thank thanks you. for showing us around. Thanks to the tenant for allowing us to film in here. Uh, Jeff, back to you in the studio. I'm sure you've got more to talk about the commercial real estate market and some of the interesting things happening therein. George, thank you. Appreciate the inside look out there. Guys, uh, back in the studio to, as we continue our conversation. Let's talk a little bit about um, maybe local real estate markets versus um, what's happening elsewhere. Is, so are, are the trends here similar? Are we better, worse than the rest of the country? What are, what are, how do we stack up against other parts of the country? I, mean, I think there's a lot of advantages to this area that, that we're seeing that people that live here understand, right? It's a good place to sort of live, work, and play. Um, and from a business perspective, Indiana is very, very friendly on, on that piece of it. So we've seen a lot of kind of flight from other states, adjoining states at times, but you know, we're all competing for the same thing right now, which is just workforce talent and, and being in the market um, and then available properties. And so everybody's kind of having a struggle with that right now, and specifically on the industrial side of buildings. But are buildings cheaper here than in other places? They are. They are cheaper than in metro areas like Chicago or the, the larger markets. Certainly cheaper. It's a little bit cheaper to do business here in general from that perspective. But it really does kind of comes back to, to talent and workforce and what's available. And Indiana does a good job promoting that. And I think this area has so much to offer with what people have been spending and doing in the downtown areas. And you know what we talked about earlier about everything that's going on in Mishawaka and downtown South Bend and in St. Joe, Michigan and all our different markets that we're in here. Um, there's, there's a definite push to increasing the amount of people that live in the downtown areas and those areas and are available to work in the, in the pool. So I think those things have a lot of benefits for Indiana. Um, and we certainly have the ability with the developers and the, the owners in this market to create buildings that people want to be in and want to be a part of. Tim, talk a little bit about just the, the retail market. I, like, I feel like historically, we were on the radars of all the big national retailers. There was a critical mass here when 
somebody was growing or expanding, we were often on their radar and mm -hmm. ended up with an expansion here. How, how do we stack up? Are we still held in high regard by national retailers who look at this marketplace? I think the market is still held in, in, in high regard. It's, it's um, and I don't think we're experiencing anything any different than any other, whether it's a similar size market to us or suburban Chicago or Grand Rapids or, you know, suburban Indianapolis. I think, I think everybody's experiencing the same thing with just the general state of how retail is going um, and uh, who's going to be active in brick and mortar and who isn't. I, I, I don't think we're a lot different than anybody else. And when you see people announcing closings um, or retailers having trouble, it's, it's not this market. It's, mm -hmm. it's across the board for that particular retailer. Uh, they're shutting down everywhere. Right. And if you take a look at, at, at when retailers announce closings, this, this is kind of interesting, I think. When they announce closings, if ultimately the whole chain shuts down, Mishawaka is on the back end of that, of that list. We are not the first market to get cut by any stretch. We're always, we, we always kind of hang in there until the bitter end with these guys. Right, great. Jim, going to come back your way on industrial. So, so during pandemic, I, and you mentioned, still have some of this lingering impacts with supply chain and such. But I remember um, supply chain, and I remember um, costs were up significantly. So that that idea of building a building now versus building it a month ago, or so have have some of those costs started to level out a little bit? Is it, st it or are we s it still experiencing uh, like a higher than normal cost? Because it, and, and how long is it? take to even get something going can you can you get steel for a building I feel like there was a portion of time where you couldn't yeah. get it how's that going now so I, I it's it's loosened up a little bit it's not all the way there by any stretch of the imagination but you know in the last I would say 12 to 16 months we've certainly seen some of those prices come down a little bit but it's taken a little bit longer to get buildings done so if you wanted to build one of those larger buildings today and you and you had the steel package available um, which is still a struggle but you had all that available and ready to go and the land was ready to go, you know, you, you're still looking at nine to 12 months to be able to get that in the ground and get that delivered to somebody. So that's the struggle is, is how do you, as a business, figure out what you're gonna do today um, to grow your business in the middle of this economy, but, not, but also not really necessarily understanding how long it's gonna take to get something done. And with such limited amount of product on the market, it makes it, it, makes it challenging. So, we, we are seeing rates kind of go uh, increase, right? Costs increase, rates, rates increase. So rates are going up. It's costing a little bit more to, to lease that, those buildings. It's also costing a lot more to, to own them, to build them. So that is definitely a struggle, um, but it's a struggle that we're not, that, that, that's not uncommon. It's, it's a struggle everywhere. So it's just something that we try to figure out. There's a little bit of musical chairs that you have to play um, to move people around to make it work, but that's what we're dealing with in, Everybody else is dealing with it too. Right, Tim, I want to come your way for a second. So, so advice to you know, I think of the the retail space a little bit uh, to be an important entrepreneurial ecosystem. A lot of folks thinking about starting up their barbershop or their restaurant or retail mm -hmm. store or something. What advice to uh, to so somebody who's watching at home today, who's thinking about starting um, and and they're, and they're thinking about the real estate market? Any advice to them as they're getting thinking about getting started? Um. Unless you've got a lot of cash in the bank, mm -hmm. uh, wait for rates to come down. Yeah. Some I think it's really hard for, for uh, the really small, you know, one and two shop businesses yeah. to finance these days, yeah. uh, and to afford it, um, and uh, look really, really hard at the labor pool and where you're going to be able to pull people from, um, and and be as realistic, you know, as you possibly can be, uh, you know, about about all of that stuff, about doing any of the analysis. The labor market is, is obviously, mm -hmm. everybody knows, is particularly yeah. difficult right yeah. now and, and yeah. particularly difficult for restaurants. Um, and, the, and the interest rate environment is tough. And, you know, rents aren't getting cheaper. Um, so it's, 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 there's a, you know, there's getting to be a bit of a constriction there that people have to recognize and deal with. Yeah. So in our, in our last couple of minutes, I want to keep on this labor market piece because you've both been in the marketplace for a little while now. So why is, it, why is the labor market so different now than before? Have we always had a little bit of this challenge? Is it there not enough people in the workforce these days? Any, anything in particular that you feel like is, is causing the, the big shortage there? Yeah, I mean, I think in general, we've always had a little bit of a struggle, right, and with labor, and everybody does. Everybody experiences that, you know, when 
the, we're right next door to Elkhart County and 85% RVs are made there. You know, those guys did really, really well during the recession in terms of producing units. And now they're going to have a little bit of a pullback this year. Um, still higher than traditional years, but that, that impacts the market, that impacts the labor market. And when you have a significant amount of people that are employed in these different manufacturing facilities in St. Joe County and Elkhart County and the surrounding counties, um, that does change how, how things work for everybody else. And so I think that's a, that's a big deal. Um, and it's something that everybody's trying to figure out. So if people get laid off, can they, can they come back to work at a lower wage? Or what does that look like? Where, where are interest rates going? Um, consumer confidence is still high. People are still spending money. So then, oh, we have to increase rates uh, more aggressively. That makes a huge impact down the down the road to everybody, um, not just people in the labor market, but to people that are trying to employ those people. So that's that's something that we've always dealt with. It's just everything's gotten magnified by the pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's Tim Nehal from NAI Cressy, Jeremy McClemens from the Bradley Company. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. Appreciate Thank the you. chance. So some cautious optimism, a little caution with inflation rate, inflation and, and some of those things. But we'll, uh, we'll look forward to having you back and, and looking at real estate again here in the future. So. Sounds great. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching on WNIT or listening to our podcast. To watch this episode again and any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org or find our podcast on most major podcast platforms. I also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray. I'll see you next time. This WNIT local production has been made possible in part by viewers like you. Thank you.